What is going on, everybody? Welcome back into another video of MVP Sports. My name is Jake Neverman, and I'm here with my co-host, Soapy Muffin. Hey! Uh, yeah, this is totally not the third time that I'm recording this intro for this video. If you do like the content that we were spreading out with all of our giraffe reviews for every single team in the NBA, check it down below in the description, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and there will be plenty more content coming out throughout the entire offseason and into the next season, obviously. Um, this video... We were talking about the Orlando Magic. I wish I wish I wouldn't have messed up earlier because I had a great segue into this one. But we're just going straight into it this time. The Orlando Magic with the fifth overall pick in the NBA draft. Uh, they did take Jalen Suggs' guard out of Gonzaga, somehow fell to them at five. And then with the eighth pick, which they acquired, obviously, in the... Uh, should I label it the Wendell Carter Jr. trade? Best player in that whole trade. <laughs> they took Franz Wagner. Oh my gosh! They took Franz Wagner, the forward out of Michigan. So, so we I, we had to start out with the first pick, Jalen Suggs. Uh, there were rumors that that, that Scotty Barnes was going to go for, but you know, people weren't trusting sources. They weren't trusting what they were hearing, and now the Magic end up just having Jalen Suggs fall into their laps at five. How huge is that for the Orlando Magic? Oh yeah, this is absolutely huge. Of where before we were kind of questioning, like, okay, like who's like who's the main guard in this team? Like who's really like the future of this team? Mm-hmm. He just got handed it. Like, I was doing them wrong. I don't think the Scotty Barnes pick was bad either, but I think it's the fact of like, okay, cool. Like the franchise leading guard just fell into the Magic's lap. Yeah. Like they're just kind of like, all right, I guess we'll take Scotty Barnes, and then we see like, oh, sorry, there's a fucking fruit fly that just flew on me. <laughs> <laughs> but. Yeah. Uh, you know, we had seen a fuck dude, that fruit fly took my whole train of thought away from me. You know, I was just so focused on Jalen Suggs and that fly. <laughs> no, I, well, this, fuck I, it, I, yeah, I was okay, I'll take I'll take because you lost your train of thought. I think the point that you were trying to make was that you know, we see the magic with Hampton, Gary Harris, Jalen Suggs, Markel Folds, Cole Anthony, and we're very much questioning, you know. Who is the future guard of this team? Who is the future point guard? And I think we found it with Jalen Suggs. Now the interesting thing is going to be just Jalen Suggs and Markel Fultz. Can they work together if Fultz can stay healthy? Because what we saw in the seven seven game stretch last year before Fultz got hurt is that he definitely still has pretty high upside, even with how young he is in his injury history. If he can recover well from the Achilles injury, they have two studs at the guard position. And then also at eight, we were talking on the live stream. Again, if you didn't watch our live stream, we were live for like five hours for the NBA draft. Um, we, we If you, you can go and listen to all of our live reactions to every pick, I especially recommend checking out the 38th overall pick to, to the Bulls pick. Um, Franz Wagner at the eighth pick is just, I mean, it's it was the safest pick. They needed a wing who could stretch the floor. And that's exactly what they got in Franz Wagner. So now... These two together, I assume they, they both start if Isaac gets pushed to the four and maybe Chumo Okeke to the five or a Wendell starts at the five, whatever the case may be. Now with their backcourt, we've already heard rumors that RJ Hampton has become available. Um, and now, so it looks like they're going to stay with Cole Anthony, Suggs, and, uh, and Markel. What do you see in the future of this backcourt? Like, who do you, obviously we know Suggs, but then, the Cole Anthony and Markel Fultz debate with the team. What do you what do you take out of that? Yeah, I think it's a those three as a rotation for guard is going to be really good. I want to see next year if they're like which pairing of those three works best together. Yeah. But for instance, like if Cole Anthony and Markel work better than like Suggs and Anthony or like Suggs and Fultz, like at that point I'd be like, okay, cool. Like have that be our bench tandem. Let's find the starting other like starting off guard yeah. of our future. Like, or like, for instance, you know, let's say one of those three doesn't pair so well with each other and like, you know, and they just don't really seem to pair with anybody. Then like, obviously you, know, you have the the free will now to be able to move on from that player. I think just with the magic, it's experimenting this year, figuring out, you know, what combinations work, what don't work. You're still a super young team. The fact that they can roll out lineups of where like everyone is like a fucking freak of nature, yeah. how lengthy they are. And the fact of, like, I'm pretty sure I think Terrence Ross is still the oldest guy in this entire roster, and I think he just turned into his 30s, I think, mm-hmm. if I remember correctly. I mean, I'm probably yeah, he's probably going to be out, too, anyways. That's that the rumor. Yeah, he'll is probably be back as with the RJ Hampton. Yeah, I guess, I guess the interesting part is, is I think for the beginning of the season, we're probably going to see Gary Harris start, and we'll probably see Suggs with Gary Harris with Franz on the wing would be my assumption. And kind of get eased back from his Achilles injury and you see Fultz and Anthony off the bench. 
Yeah, I mean, I think there's a chance that we don't see Suggs start right away. I think we may see Cole Anthony start, and then Suggs kind of work his way into it. I would hate that. Like, I think literally at this point, they could just kind of throw anyone into the starting lineup. Like, obviously, I think besides Fultz, I think with Fultz, they definitely take this time to ease him back in, especially with the fact that I don't think Hampton gets moved in the offseason. I think he gets moved sometime during the season. Fair. So I think we see Fultz slowly get integrated back in. But yeah, you think, I think, you think them being able to roll. <laughs> Sorry, I was going to make a bad joke. I was going to say, you think Fultz to Philly and then Ben Simmons and Jalen Suggs? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Maybe you know the prodigal son returns home, oh, hitch and all. Yeah, uh, I think yeah. like, yeah, I think if we see a lineup starting at the year and like, let's say like, Suggs, Harris, Franz, Isaac, and OKK, like that's a really good starting lineup for them to run out. Yeah. Or even if you want to sub in like Cole Anthony for Suggs there. I think either one of those works out fine for them. But I do think day one, we probably see Franz start. That's mostly just because I think he fits better with that starting lineup than Terrence Ross does. Fair. But I mean, once again, who knows? Who knows about the wonders of free agency? They could sign literally anybody. Yeah. That, that's why I guess more focusing like with Franz on this team too. I, I think I spoke about it a little bit in the last big board we did. Franz is kind of an enigma to me because I, I think that most people labeled him as just, oh, he's going to step in and be a very good role player. Oh, voice crack. Very good role player. Um, well, I think role. his role player, well, I think his upside might be a little bit higher. Honestly. Now, I'm not saying an all-star level or anything like that, but being able to be like, he can play make at a good level for his height. He's obviously a knockdown shooter. His ball handling is good. His passing is good. Defensively, he has some giant upside. I just think labeling him as a role player, which a lot of people have done kind of like they do with Corey Kispert, there's a reason where Kispert went and where Franz went. I think that Franz has a little bit higher upside, and I don't know how to label it because it's not all-star upside, but it's not high-end role player upside. It's that sweet middle middle section. I think... Uh, I would yeah. probably... I mean, just kind of my way of thinking about it of like... He's like a very like a higher valued version of like Harrison Barnes. Where Harrison Barnes is like yeah. a high end role player, but like he's not all star level. Like Franz would be one of those guys of like the way I look at it of like if like two of the reserves got hurt and, and didn't want to play in the all star game, like Franz would start being thrown in consideration. That's where I start putting them up. Like okay. not exactly like shoe an all star, but like almost all star reserve. So like, peak. so like current Gordon Hayward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, Gordon I, Hayward. Yeah, Gordon Hayward after about four major injuries before anybody gets mad at me. Yeah. Um. Do you, so let's wrap it up. I'll go first with my grade for the Orlando Magic. I'm gonna give them. I'm gonna give them an A minus because I genuinely think that they hit very well on both picks. Um. With two picks, getting a guy like Franz, and getting a guy like Jan Suggs. I won't give him an A plus just because Suggs fell in their lap, so I can't give him an A plus. But an A minus, Franz and Jalen Suggs. I think we talked about them lacking their identity, and I think they kind of finally figured out their identity with taking Suggs at the fifth pick. Yeah, uh, I'm going to go with the A. Like, they didn't, they, you know, made the moves they had to. They made, you know, the the good selection. Obviously, I, I do factor in the fact that Suggs did fall to them, into that. But, I mean, even at, like, the eighth pick, like, they chose a guy who fits perfectly with them. Like, if they went two guards, like, if they went, like, with Moses Moody at eight, that would have been a weird fit then. Yeah. You obviously, you would have drafted your backcourt in the future. At that point, you could be like, hey, you other two, fuck off, we don't care. But, like, with this one, you know, you filled the position of, like, there were question marks about. Yeah. To where now it's like, okay, like, you've opened this up for the team now, and now they can really figure out what they want to do. That's why I'm going to give them the A grade. Yeah, that's fair. Um, If you like what you're seeing, go down below. You can join our Discord channel, our Discord whole server, actually. If you disagree with our, our grades throughout these entire videos, you can you can add us and you can debate us. And we'll, most of us will answer. Dave probably won't answer you because Dave is, Dave is a little bit eh on answering Discord messages. But also down below, check out our Patreon and our channel memberships. You can get videos, uh, all sorts of videos. We're increasing our volume of our Patreon content uh, now basically weekly. You get those a week earlier than everybody else does here on YouTube. Um, and that'll do it for this video and me and Soapy will see you guys in the next one.